0500 uh, Let's speak to the independent MSP Margaret MacDonald, who's called a supporter of independence, of course. But what about Calman? It's the economy, stupid. <laughs> Now, Calman was about individual taxation, and that's fine, that's great. It's um, all for moving more accountability and responsibility to the Scottish Parliament. But I think what the Scots want is a better performing economy that provides jobs for everyone who wants a job in Scotland. I think the economy is the overriding consideration, and the taxation that Calman proposes to shift to Scotland is not the sort you need to get the economy going. Well, it could be if we lowered taxes in this country, many would argue we could attract businesses to Scotland. I doubt it very much you can attract businesses only in, in that way. You've got to have corporation tax at your disposal. You've got to have all the planning regulations tying in with taxation and so on. And the people who have been on to say that really, why don't you just make it independent? So the sensible ones, because that's what this exercise of Calman has shown, that you've got to go very artificial again in order to maintain the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom arguably may have done a a grand job at the start of the 18th century in allowing Scots access to the burgeoning English Empire, but uh, we're into the 21st century. But isn't it clear that the majority of the Scottish public don't want independence? Uh, well, I think the majority of the Scottish public would like to have a good life for themselves and their family here in Scotland, and they don't give really too much attention or too much um, angst is uh, lavished on whether or not it's going to be a constitutional arrangement called independence or federation or confederation or devolution. They just want a better life for themselves and their family here in Scotland. And I would argue that we, we know what being the fag end of the British state has brought to Scotland, which is always, we're always running at the goose tail as regards economic development and employment. Now, why do we continue to want to do that? We won't break the social ties that we've got across the border. We want to. But we should have an economic management that is tailored to our condition and our economic construct, because it's very, very different now from England's. But are these plans better than nothing? I mean, if this, you know, if, if you could vote on these plans, would, would, would no, I'll you be say asked yes to them? vote on them, perhaps. And uh, if it's an improvement, of course I'll vote yes if it's an improvement. But why are we setting our sights so low? Why aren't we going for, for broke just now? For goodness sake, the, the, the financial management and the economic management of Scotland's resources by London has been shown to be less than perfect. In fact, it's just awful. Surely we wouldn't do it worse ourselves. Why are you so sure that you'll be asked to, you, your opinions on this? Isn't this a matter for the Westminster Parliament? Ah, but we'll have a vote on it, I'm sure we will. We'll have a debate because we're, we're supposed to articulate what the Scots are thinking. And certainly I will be sticking to what I believe to be the truth. That the Scots want to have the good life for themselves and their families here in Scotland. And it's up to us to find out the way of delivering it using, you know, constitutional means to get the, the sort of parliament and the sort of powers we need. I mean, I, I, I want a new cooperation amongst all the islands of the British Isles in Ireland. Somebody was talking about, you know, the need to look after borders and so on. Well, as an offshore island group in Europe, we've got a common interest amongst all the islands, but it has to be based on the equality of the different parts. Okay. Margot, thank you very much indeed. Uh